Hi everyone, welcome back to Technically Designed Home. My name is Marissa, and today I want to cover the, one of the topics that I mentioned in my last video, which was how to plan for a move. I'll link that up in the cards above. But what I want to talk about today is how to create a digital floor plan of your space, whether it's because you're moving or you want to just rearrange your furniture, and how to get dimensions, a scale model of your space so that you can play around without having to lug your heavy furniture around. I'm going to show you on my computer exactly how I use Microsoft PowerPoint to create these models to easily rearrange your space. So let's jump right into the video. So our first step is to measure. I'm showing you here in my living room my sectional couch because measuring this can be kind of tricky. So I have the depth of section one measured at 34 inches. I'm labeling that A. And now I have the width of the back of the couch on the first piece as B, 81 inches. The third thing that I measure is the width of the chaise section, which is about 36 inches, and then the depth of the chaise all the way from the foot to the back of the couch. Another way to get dimensions for your furniture is by looking them up on the website of the retailer. I'm gonna look up my Calyx 4x2 cube shelf to find the dimensions here. So I'm browsing the IKEA catalog and I open up its selection. IKEA has these handy diagrams with dimensions of the units. I have mine laid on its side, so its length is the 57 inches, the height is 30 inches, and then the depth is going to be 15 inches. And we'll use that later on when we make our diagram. Next step is creating the floor plan. Since I live in an apartment complex with their floor plans posted online, I'm going to go to apartments.com and find the floor plan image that is posted. I bring up the image here and I prefer the white version because it's cleaner. And then I right click on the image and say save image as. I'll save it to my desktop for when we get to our PowerPoint process. Once I have the floor plan image saved, I'm going to open a blank PowerPoint presentation and clear out all of the text box templates that come built in. Then I'm going to insert the image. In this case, I copied and pasted it. And I'm going to crop the excess white space around my floor plan. And scale it up a little bit so you can see better. The next thing to do is to create a line based on one of the dimensions marked on the floor plan. So I'm gonna insert a shape, and in the second bedroom below, the height of the wall is approximately 10 feet. So I'm going to do a one inch to one foot scale in my diagram, and I'm gonna make this line along the wall here and then change the dimension to 10.75 inches, which is equivalent of 10.75 feet, that's labeled on the diagram. As you can see now, our scale is a little bit off so far, which is where we're gonna go into the design and change the slide size to fit our one inch to one foot scale. I based the dimensions on the overall floor plan as seen here, which made the height of my page about 50 feet, so 50 inches. And then just to make it easy on myself, I'm going to make the height and width both 50 inches. Now you can see once we rescaled the page that our line dimension got a little bit messed up. So I'm gonna go and correct it back to the 10.75 inches or 10 and three quarters feet and line it up again with the wall. I'm gonna do a quick change of color so you can see it better and make it a red line. And then I'm going to expand the floor plan until that wall is this approximately the same size as my reference line that I created. Once I've scaled up the image, you can see that the floor plan is now approximately one inch to one foot in real life. 
This is where taking a tape measure, like my recommendation from our last video, into the apartment when you go to tour a new place comes in handy. Because even if your apartment complex does not put dimensions on their floor plan, you can estimate the size of the overall apartment based on the dimensions of one room. All right, now we're ready for the furniture. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull up my note in my iPhone where I jotted down the dimensions from all of my furniture. As you can see here, I have dimensions for some furniture that you didn't even see. The couch is listed here with the dimensions that you saw on the video earlier. I have A and B to note the back piece and then D and C to note the chaise. I'm scrolling down here to show you the rest of my dimensions, but you'll see them later in the video. To make it easy, I'm gonna first go through how I created that Calyx cube shelf unit, since it's a square piece with easy dimensions. I have it laying on its side. In the diagram here, it's vertical, but I have mine as two high by four wide, which makes the length 57 inches and the depth 15 inches. So what I'm gonna do for each piece of furniture is I'm going to insert a shape, primarily squares, but some circles. So for the calyx unit, I'm going to insert a rectangle and then we will change the dimensions. Once I've inserted the shape, I'm going to apply the dimensions that we just discussed. I'm gonna do some quick math because Ikea's dimensions are all in inches and our scale is one foot to one inch. So I'm gonna divide the dimensions by 12 inches, which will bring us out to 4.75 by 1.25 inches slash feet in this case. One of the other tricks I like to do for reference is to do the edit text and add a label to each of my items. So I'll right click and use the edit text feature. And in this case, I'm gonna label it Q since it's a cube shelf. Then I'm gonna place the furniture into the room where it is stationed. This floor plan is actually for my current unit, but you'll see here how I move it into my next apartment. Last step, design. So one of the tricks I like to do is to color code my items. As you can see here, my rugs are, and lamps are all yellow. My seating furniture, such as my bed and my couch are blues and my tables and flat surfaces are green. So now that I have a floor plan for my new apartment, what I'll do is I'll set it up using the same steps from step two, and then I will copy and paste the images of the furniture from the page one to now page two. And then I can reorient them and rearrange them to test how I will set up my existing furniture in my new place. A trick for making the sectional furniture is to make two rectangles. So as we measured it earlier, we measured A and B, and that's the piece I've drug out here. And then I take the dimensions C and D to make a second square. Now what we did when we measured was we overlapped the square in the corner. So we're going to do that here on the diagram. And then we'll group the two rectangles together so that way they move around as one piece when you're rearranging your furniture. To do this, you either left click and hold the control button to click both items, or you click left click and drag to select all items, then right click to use the group feature. Now, once they're grouped, they'll move around as one unit unless you ungroup them in the future. I use this same technique for other bulk items that are always moved together, such as my desk pieces and my piano with its stool. That way I always have the orientation correct and I know where they go. So I hope you found this video interesting and you learned something new today. But tell me, what are your room challenges? Are you about to move or you just want to reorganize your space? If you have a particular space that you're interested in getting my help with, send me an email at the email listed in the description box below. Send me the dimensions of your space and what your problem is, and I would be happy to cover it in a future video or to send you an email if that's what you prefer. So don't forget to hit the like button below if you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe and turn on your notification bell if you want to be notified for future videos from the Move With Me series or other information about smart home tech reviews, interior design, and organization. I plan to post a video every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I hope you come back and join me next week for the next installment. And until then, I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you then.
Thanks for watching.